I have no shorter fuse with anyone in my life than I do my own mother. My mom could be like, I'm forwarding you an article about the LA Art Deco movement. And I'm like, why would you do that? <laughs> You all have gotten robocalls where you pick up the phone and there's like, how would you like an exciting time? Oh, fuck it. And you just hang hey, on, a goddamn robocall. But I've gotten a couple of calls recently where I pick up the phone and it's a woman's voice. And she'll go, hey, how you doing? I'm like, I'm good. And then she goes, so I wonder, oh, hang on, something's wrong with my headset. And she'll adjust her headset. Okay, so it's not just me. And then, and, and I'll go, oh, that's okay. And then she'll start talking and it's just a recorded pitch for a, the whole thing is a recording, including the, oh, sorry, something's wrong with my headset. And three different times I've gone, that's okay. <laughs> and then they go into their stupid pitch. And I, then when I hang up, I'm like, you motherfucker. Like, I'm so angry. Like, I'm gonna burn your building down if I figure out. Cause they just tricked me and I'm so angry. And also what makes me angry, okay, first I'm angry because they tricked me. Second, I'm angry because what that means is some robocall company had a meeting and said, we can't just have the, they pick up the phone and their guy goes, would you like, a, we got to add a little, a little zest and pizzazz to hook them. And then they'll listen to the whole thing. And the idea, so it means they, and they found some failed screenwriter, out of work playwright. And the idea that the man or woman came up with and got paid for the level of drama they came up with was, oh, my headset, let me just adjust my headset. <laughs> That's as far as they went. If you, okay, if you've already committed to just completely bullshitting me on a robocall, entertain me, just go for it. <laughs> like when I pick up that phone, I'm like, hello, I should hear like, he, he's stabbing me. <laughs> oh God, I'm, I'm bleeding out. I suck. He's, uh, he's killing everyone in the office. I'm hiding him. Please listen, I promised my son when I left today I would sell one timeshare in Boca Raton. My entire family took me to Hooters to celebrate my 18th birthday. Now, this was a time in our chain restaurant history when if it was your birthday, the entire wait staff came out just singing happy birthday to you. They're banging drums, they're throwing plates, they got t-shirt cannons, there's confetti. Everybody knows it's your birthday. And I didn't want that kind of attention at a Hooters because I didn't know how I felt about boobs, especially not other people's boobs. <laughs> so in the car ride there, I say to everyone in my family, I'm like, you better not tell them it's my birthday or I'll kill you. <laughs> so we get to Hooters and my brother's girlfriend comes up to me and she goes, guess what? I told him it was your birthday. So I shanked her. <laughs> Yes. I'm all sweating from the Hooters and hot sauce. And I'm eating my chicken wings all angry because I know what's happening at the end of this meal. I'm like, ugh, ugh. And sure enough, here comes the boob parade. It's just titties, 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 titties. There's eight Hooters waitresses and they grab me by the hand and they start parading me around the restaurant. It feels like the gay Salem witch trials. <laughs> They're just like, we got one! We got one! Gather around! We got one! <laughs> then they take a bar stool just like this. They put it in the middle of the restaurant and they make me stand on top of this bar stool. Then all eight Hooters waitresses circle around me like some sort of satanic ritual. I'm like, am I about to get hanged in a Hooters? <laughs> Surrounded by the thing I think I love and cannot touch, this is cruel. <laughs> so I'm just standing there awaiting my fate and all of a sudden I hear this noise and I look down and all the Hooters waitresses are jumping up and down like this. <laughs> Because it turned out back then, when it was your birthday, you got to stand on a bar stool and look down while titties flopped <laughs> all around you. 
This was before the Me Too movement. I was so mean to my mom. Why, why are we so mean to our mom? Why am I still mean to my mom? You guys, and you're like, I'm not mean to my mom. I love my mom. Okay, here's my impression of every single one of you getting a phone call from your mother. Okay, here it goes. Fuck. <laughs> That's it. It's perfect. It's a perfect impression. I have no shorter fuse with anyone in my life than I do my own mother. My mom could be like, I'm forwarding you an article about the LA Art Deco movement. And I'm like, why would you do that? <laughs> No, Art Deco is like my least favorite architectural movement. <laughs> Meanwhile, dads get off scot-free. I remember my dad would call me on the phone and be like, hey, son, wanted to come to your baseball game today, but then didn't. <laughs> and I'm like, that's okay, daddy. <laughs> My mom's like, I like that jacket on you. I'm like, what about all my other jackets? <laughs> At work, it's all about being wasteful with no remorse. You don't feel a thing. You don't feel a thing. Have you ever thrown away documents that you just printed? <laughs> you just click print all. It just came out. It's a fresh little stack. Have you ever thrown away Warm paper? <laughs> it feels wrong. It feels like maybe you should wait for it to cool down before you throw it in the garbage. It just got here. Let it live a little bit. But you don't hesitate, because that office life made you a gangster. Wait, wait, wait. We do this all the time. We say, you made me uncomfortable. I'm uncomfortable. Like, we're supposed to be comfortable. I've never been comfortable once in my entire life. When I'm about to fall asleep, at my most relaxed, when I'm about to fall asleep, my body jerks awake like, never rest, bitch. <laughs> we say everything makes us uncomfortable. Men, women, we say women make us uncomfortable. That's the one I hate the most. We say women of color all the time, we tell them they make us uncomfortable. Like a couple years ago at the Super Bowl, we say J-Lo and Shakira made us uncomfortable. A couple years before that at the Super Bowl, we said Beyonce made us uncomfortable. A couple years before that at the Super Bowl, we said Janet Jackson made us uncomfortable. I think a lot of white women only see women of color at the Super Bowl. <laughs> They're like, this show is different than Friends. <laughs> but this one makes me so mad because this, this one, women, we say, it's family values. So we say, how dare those women move their hips like that in front of my children and my husband? It's immoral. I don't think that's the word you meant. I think you meant jealous. <laughs> how dare you show my husband how hips can move like mine can't? You ever seen a white woman try to twerk? You ever seen it? It looks like Pinocchio trying to walk as a real boy for the first time. No child is born hating. You have to teach a child to hate. All children are good. All children are born pure. You know, only people without kids say dumb shit like that. <laughs> kids are the meanest motherfuckers on the face of the earth. They're the most racist, sexist, homophobic, fatophobic, will say anything to your face, motherfuckers, on earth, okay? You realize human beings, we have the worst offspring of any animal. We're the only animal in the whole animal kingdom that has to raise its kids for 18 years. 18 years. Every other animal is like two or three days. <laughs> like birds are like, I hope you can fly. So my parents swear 
that when they were in their late 20s, they were driving through northern Ontario, down like a winding road through a forest, and they drove under a moose. <laughs> they swear. They swear. My mom says they were driving down this winding road, the moose was horizontal on the road, and they drove under its belly. It makes me feel ins... I'm like, what are you talking about? It's... And so... <laughs> that's, she does a sound effect of uh, the sound of the belly fur of the moose gently grazing the roof of the car. Like, just like... <laughs> can you imagine? It makes me feel insane. It makes me feel crazy. And uh, it, it makes my brother irate as well. Because, uh, so the last time I was visiting, me and my brother were like, we need to get to the bottom of this. Like, we need to find out if this is even possible. So we did research and we found out the height of a Toyota Tercel. So that's, that's the car they were driving. So the height of the roof of the car, we, we Googled like the largest ever recorded moose. <laughs> and the infuriating thing is, it could just have happened. <laughs> it could just have happened. Like, if they happen to stumble upon the biggest ever recorded moose, I guess it's possible. It makes me feel insane. <sighs> Do you think it's true? Give me a cheer if you think it's true. <laughs> really? Okay, give me a cheer if you think it's bullshit. I don't know. I think it says a lot about your worldview. Like if you, you know what I mean? If you believe in the moose, you're young at heart. You, you've retained a sliver of like childlike enthusiasm about life. And if you don't believe in the moose, you're, you're look, it's been a tough couple years. It's been tough. And you know what happens, ladies? When you get drunk, you become so annoying. Do you notice? Know I don't think you notice. Know you get so annoying, yeah? And what do you want to do when you get drunk and annoying and you're reaching for the turn up? What do you want to do? Do you want to keep turning up? No. What you want to do, you want to check in with us, yeah? In the afternoon, leave me alone. I'm playing Call of Duty, leave me alone, yeah? I'm playing Call of Duty in the afternoon, leave me alone. Because I'll be honest, and I'll take this for free, when we're out with the guys, we don't want to check in on you. We don't. We don't. You know it's that, guys, you're gonna check in. Man, I'm gonna call the missus. Bruv, don't do it. <laughs> Why? She'll spoil the fun and tell you to come home. Okay, all right, I won't do it, I won't do it, I won't do it. I'm playing Call of Duty with my friends in the afternoon, online, with people all around the world, and you wanna call me up from the brunch, drunk with your annoying self, yeah? Hello? Hello? Hello, is that the bitch pussy old boy? Hello? <laughs> <laughs> Hello? Uh, babes, babes, um, I'm, babes, babes, I'm, pl I'm playing Call of Duty right now, babes. Uh, what's wrong, what's wrong? Oh, you're playing Call of Duty, okay. All right, I'm a soldier man, uh, okay. A soldier man, yeah. So what are you doing then? Wait, tell me what's going on in the Call of Duty game. What's going on there? What's happening in that thing then? Babes, I'm saying, um, I can't really talk right now because we're about to go into the gulag, so, like, I can't really talk right now. I'm saying, yeah, fuck the fucking gulag, yeah? Okay, listen what I'm saying, yeah? I'm at the brunch, yeah? Okay. <laughs> no, Prosecco, gas me up, gas me up, Prosecco. You know that she needs. <laughs> listen, yeah? I'm here, yeah? And I'm not gonna lie, I'm a bit drunk, yeah? <laughs> and you know what, yeah? <laughs> yes, yes, yes! <laughs> That's on period, on period! <laughs> Can I say something, yeah? I'm a bit drunk, yeah? And you know what, yeah? I'm feeling horny, you know that? <laughs> so what are you saying, Call of Duty man, huh? What are you saying? You're gonna blow up my back? You're gonna do that, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> Shut up, are you gonna do that, yeah? Babes, can I call you back in a bit? Literally, the game's gonna start. I'm about to go into the gulag. So what, you're playing Call of Duty, yeah? Okay, pussy old boy, all right. Okay, pim, pim, pim. Pim, pim, pim. Hold up, wait a minute, it's a pussy old. Get off the phone, man. 
fucking idiot. Such an idiot. I'm angry on behalf of all women that a man like you thinks he can wear an outfit like that and come to a party and fuck a girl like me. Not gonna happen. that after everything we've learned as a society, all together, men and women alike, and everything in between, all together, everything we've learned about the imbalance of power and what abuse women have been subjected to, that men aren't just walking up and the first sentence out of their mouth is, I'm sorry. Yeah.